Hi, I'm Paul, KB5MU, with Open Research Institute. And here at the Remote Lab West, we've received a new device. It's an analog devices ADRV9002 eval kit for their radio transceiver chip. And I thought we'd do a little unboxing in the internet tradition. Here it is. Let's see, how do we get in? Not on that end. Maybe on this end. Maybe on this end. Okay. That looks like a plausible way in. Whoop. Okay. The box inside the box. It's very light and wrapped in anti-static wrap. I can just find the end to the wrap, which is probably under this sticker. Or maybe I'll just create my own end. Okay. This is protecting it from the inside of the cardboard box, I guess. All right. Here we have a packing list. Sure enough, it's an ADRV 9002NP slash W2 slash PCBZ, which means it's the eval board in the 3 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz configuration, which is what we ordered. Good. All right, now we've got another bag, anti-static bag, not actually sealed. Okay, and now we have a box. And sure enough, it's the same thing. Sealed, fragile, caution, attention, okay. Nothing too surprising there. seal. There we go. Okay, now we're sneaking up on something interesting. Piece of foam. That's not interesting. Here's the, the documentation that comes on paper. It says plug it in, maybe use some test equipment, and there's some links to software drivers and so forth. That'll be useful once we're ready to get started with it. This little bag contains, looks like a, a release of software on a micro SD card. And some kind of a, another card containing the TES software. That's the test evaluation system, if I remember our acronyms correctly. And we got a couple of standoffs to make it stand up on the bench. And another envelope. And that's all that's in this box. Now this envelope looks like it might actually contain the radio. We're at our anti-static workstation here, so we're, we're good. Don't have a wrist strap handy. Just maintain contact with the anti-static surface to be sufficient. There we go. There it is. I can turn it this way and zoom in even more. There's a very shiny little chip here in the middle. Must be the RF device. And eight. SMA connectors in a rough circle around the chip and two more up here at the top. We're not going to be able to see much here. I could try to hold it up to the camera, but let's go to a macro and see what we can learn about this device. Okay, there's the actual device. It's uh, maybe a little more than a centimeter square on the outside 
little bit less than a centimeter in the shiny black part. And if I zoom out a little bit, trying to keep it in focus, you can see how it's connected up to all these different SMA connectors. Those top two of the eight don't seem to have surfaces, surface traces, but they must be connected on some other layer. And then there's two at the top. What's their label? Let's zoom in on each one in turn. This one is TX2 out, RX2A in, external LO2, RX2B in, RX1B in, external LO1, RX1A in, and TX1 out. So we've got two transmitters. Looks like four receivers or four receiver inputs anyway. And then here at the top, dev MCS in and dev clock in. One thing this board has that our other radio does not have is an onboard crystal oscillator. The switch in the upper right hand corner switches between external clock source and an internal clock source. And I'm guessing that rectangular thing in the lower left is the internal clock source. Obviously, the SMA connector that's marked dev clock in is for the external source. There are a few headers here. Looks like there's an SPI, some other digital I.O. And there are some unpopulated connectors here, which have labels in very tiny silk screen explaining what they're or naming the connectors the pins anyway if not exactly explaining them hopefully there's some documentation for this there's the nomenclature fan connector okay I'm turning it over Whee! This monstrosity, that's an FPGA mezzanine card connector. This is a standardized connector for connecting stuff to FPGA development boards, which is exactly what we want to do, interestingly enough. And not much else on the back. There's some RF traces, some little devices. But basically, it's that one chip with connectors on it interfaced to the development board through this giant FMC connector. We'll put this back in its anti-static bag until it's time to install it on the development board in the lab. For Open Research Institute, Remote Lab West, I'm Paul, KB5MU. Thanks for watching.